The Melbourne tram system is one of the biggest tram systems in the world with about over 1,813 stops and 250 kilometers of track, on par with Moscow, St. Petersburg and Kuln. When Melbourne was growing at a rapid pace since the 19th century, many tram networks were built to accommodate the growing population, with the average of four tram lines being built in one year. Many years later, until the 21st century, the most recent tram extensions were tramway corridors in the Docklands area near the CBD and two tram lines to Box Hill and Vermont South. As a result, despite being the biggest tram network in the world, it only covers one to four of the Melbourne metropolitan area, including the outer suburbs. Since 2022, there have been some improvements to the tram network, including accessible stops, new trams, and track upgrades. These don't address the wider issue of outer suburbs. Some suburbs are not served by tram or train, and either have no or very infrequent bus services. So what could be the solution to the problem? Extending the tram lines has been a topic of discussion for many years in Melbourne since the 1920s. In 1923, the Melbourne Metropolitan Tramways Board made a map on proposed tram extensions. Only one-seventh of the extensions have been built. So today, I'm going to talk about the Melbourne tram extensions. Most of the tram extensions will include where we'll extend to, what is going to be built, the advantages and disadvantages of building new tram lines, and the reason for extending the tram line. I'm not going to go into too much detail such as the economics, costs, logistics and political obstacles. This is just a simple video of tram extensions which is a transport topic. I may also make my own approximations of the proposals and what they may include and based on my observation of the current transport network as of 2023. In 2005, the Public Transport User Association, or PTUA for short, released a document called Five Years Closer to 2020. It talks about the growing tram network and patronage and what can be done to resolve the patronage increase. This includes tram extensions and train extensions. One tram route is the Route 6 tram to Glen Iris. They proposed to extend it along High Street to Ashburton Station, so it would go downhill, cross over the Glen Wavy Railway and keep going until it gets to the bridge near Ashburton Station. In the 1923 proposal, there was an extension to go further than Ashburton Station. This tram extension would serve many businesses, provide a direct, uninterrupted, non-interchangeable connection to the two town areas, and serve a direct link between Alamein and Glen Waverley line trains. Some challenges is the section near Glen Iris Station. Removing the street poles and reconfiguring the road might be a worthy suggestion, but then you have crossing over the train tracks as well. Great separation might be a ideal suggestion, but the Level Crossing Removal Authority apparently has no proposals for Glen Iris Station, but I don't see anything wrong with this. When the Level Crossing at Garton Station was removed in 2016, it took about six months to complete, with demolishing the tracks and building a new road and new train station. So building something simple as a tram train crossing shouldn't take that long and too much effort. Is, is that correct? Because I think it could be possible. On the same document from Ptuh, there is a proposal to extend the Route 67 tram from Trugani Road to Carnegie Station. It is quite simple, just turn a left turn onto Kuranon Road and extend in a straight line until you reach Carnegie Station. It will be a more logical turn as providing connections with the Cranbourne and Pakenham line trains and can serve the town around Kuranon Road and it can provide a simple commuting option without having to take a complicated bus route. It can also provide connections with town areas between Glen Huntley and Elstonwick. One challenge is the curve at Kuranan Road, which has an accessible terminus platform. You could build the two curved tracks at the intersection, but then you have the curved tracks going over one section of the intersection, similar to what the Route 86 tram has at Gertrude Street. You could move the traffic light back a bit, and at the end of the curve, you could build a ramp and then build a raised road accessible platform, just like what the Route 96 has done. Rebuilding a tram stop would require the tram to terminate at a different point of the line, but the accessible platforms would make for better accessibility. Most of Melbourne's tram network needs to build the raised platforms to improve accessibility for wheelchair people. I mean, Melbourne's tram network is being held accountable for breaching discrimination laws.
there is a proposal from the same document to extend the Route 58 tram from Turak to Hartwell. The extension is simple, a line extends along Turak Road, going under the Glen Waverley line, crossing over the Route 72 tram at Burke Road and then connecting up with the Route 75 tram at Camberwell Road. This tram extension would provide better connections with the Alamein line and the Route 72 and 58 trams. It can also improve tram service flexibility for the Route 75 tram as if there is a disruption, trams can be rerouted onto the new line. Perhaps the best thing about the tram extension is this. It goes past Hawthorne East Shopping Centre, the Coles Support Centre HQ, the Taronga Village Shopping Centre, a medical hub and a primary school. So building this tram extension will provide a simple shopping trip and might make a doctor's long commute much easier. Another proposal from the same document talks of an extension of the Route 72 extending down south along Burke Road to Caulfield. It would keep going down Burke Road, crossing over the Route 6 tram and the Route 3 tram and ending at Princess Highway. The 1923 map also had a similar proposal to extend to Caulfield. This tram extension would provide better connections to Caulfield Station and the Frankston Crab and Packenham lines. It can also improve accessibility to Central Park, Monash University Caulfield Campus and the race course. Perhaps one challenge of this extension is the tram routes. Will Route 72 stay the same? Will there be Route 73 that turns left? Will the Burke Road corridor have its own dedicated tram route just like Route 78? There are many things that could happen with the tram route, but if the tram extension does happen, we'll just have to wait and see. In the same document, there was a proposal to extend the Route 57 tram from West Murray to East Keylor. The tramway would go along Canning Street, passing Avondale Heights and ending at Warwright Place. Perhaps what's awesome about this tram extension is that it's near two shopping districts, a Catholic parish, a primary school and a grammar school. So building a tramway would improve accessibility to those hubs and could make it easier for school students going to school. It can also give East Keylor easy connections to the Route 82 tram to Footscray and the Craigieburn train line. There isn't really much challenges, except one. The current tram terminus is adjacent to a defence site and is a restricted area, so the tram track will have to be built on the road. It may involve reconfiguration of the current tram terminus and intersection. A tram track crossing over one part of the road and into the intersection. This might not be too much effort and it wouldn't interfere with the defence site. I'm not really so sure if the defence site is a restricted area though. In 2014, the Australian Greens have proposed a couple of tram extensions in response to the 2014 state election. They have even opted for a couple of tram extensions that the Petula have proposed before. But let's get to the tram route. In 2010, the city of Darabin have released a now inaccessible document which proposed the Route 11 tram to be extended from West Preston to Reservoir Station. It would continue along Gilbert Road, go downhill, turn right at Edward Street and continue on until reaching Reservoir Station. The extension was also proposed in the 1923 map. It can connect commuters directly to the Mernda line and help them commute to Reservoir's major shopping district. An alternative proposal was also proposed by the Greens, for the tram to turn right at Henty Street, turn left onto Spratling Street and then turn right onto Edwards Road. This alternative would avoid the steep grade. Battling challenges is how wide the roads are. The downhill roads at Edwards Park are quite thin and do have grass around it. It might not be that hard to reconfigure. I was just building a dedicated tramway on the right side here and re rebuild the road beside the tram tracks, separating the trams from road traffic. The bicycle lane, the footpath on the left side could probably be converted into a bike path and I've heard that bicycle lanes or gutters are dangerous and not a good thing. In Gilbert Road, building tram tracks in this car park would happen. The street poles are already in place for the overhead wires. For the alternative route, the road is somewhat narrow and there is a car park. Converting the car park into the tram tracks would be ideal. It would allow for the tram to pass through with no traffic interference. In February 2018, the opposition leader of the Labour Party, Bill Shorten, pledged to bring the tram extension down to the end of Gilbert Road if the Labour Party won the election. In 2019, a member of Victorian Parliament, Fiona Patton, made a speech about extending the tram line further than Reservoir. Uh, my constituency question today is for the Minister for Public Transport and it's in relation to Tram Route 11. Now I understand that her department is discussing 
extending Route 11 so that it terminates at Reservoir Station. However, constituents of mine tell me that there is a far greater need to, for that route to be ex extended to terminate at Keon Park instead. And this would be via Edward Street, Best Street, Botha Avenue and Hughes Parade to Keon Park. This tram extension involves the tram track making a left turn from Edward Street onto Best Street and then continuing to Botha Avenue. Some challenges to this extension is this. In Botha Avenue, there is a median strip and trees in the middle. The road is wide for cars and there are two lines separating the driving and parking. Perhaps building the tram tracks closest to the median strip and then removing one of the white lines could help. In Hughes Parade, there is a bigger median strip with bigger trees. Perhaps expanding the median strip a little bit and then put the tram tracks on that. At the end point, there is a grassy patch full of trees and are aligned diagonally. Perhaps building a dedicated tram stop parallel to the line of trees and maybe some sidings out here somewhere. This will give the tram dedicated right away when it leaves Keon Park. By the time I'm writing this, Level Crossing Removal Authority had announced that they are removing Keon Park Level Crossing and rebuilding Keon Park Station. Designs have been released and the station has been moved closer to the trees. There is also a pedestrian crossing. If the tram line was built at the same time as Keon Park Station, it would provide a direct connection with the trams. The Rail Futures Institute have also proposed for the tram to go further to Plenty Road along Broadway and Bolgerwood Parade. It will provide a connection to the Route 86 tram and can help people get to Reservoir Station. Some obvious challenges include big trees in the middle of Broadway, so the road will need to be recovered to expand the median strip for tram tracks. For wheelchair people, some raised road surface platforms will have to be built for the trams. So my question is, will the government consider an extension of Route 11 to Keon Park so as to give the people of Reservoir the transport options they desperately need? As of 2023, the state government still has no interest to build the extension. On the same Greens document, there is a proposal to extend the Route 5 line from Malvern to Darling. It would involve going further down Wattletree Road, turn right onto Malvern Road and turn left onto Illawa Street. A similar extension was also on the 1923 map. This would provide a direct connection with the Glen Waverley line. Perhaps one challenge is the tram terminus. There is a huge bush and fence blocking the view of the train station and the entrance to the car park has no footpath, meaning that wheelchair people will need to watch for cars. Perhaps building two raised pedestrian crossings near the tram stop, cut through the fence and make a dedicated path through the car park to the station entrance. This would probably make accessibility much easier and will make the train station stand out to the surrounding area. When the northern suburbs of Melbourne were built in the 1980s, there was a huge median strip left in between Plenty Road with the intention of a future tram extension. The tram extension has barely been built and as a result, the road was upgraded to three lanes and is getting busier and busier every day. When the Epping Railway line was extended to South Rang in early 2010s, a huge parking lot was built beside the station. As many people in these kinds of suburbs own cars, the parking lot fills up and cannot cater for enough car dependent capacity and residents sometimes park in the parking lot at Westfield Shopping Centre adjacent to the train station. There are bus services, but most of them are not that good. There are indirect routes to South Rain Station, they get stuck in traffic jams, there are not much bus lanes and most buses are infrequent with some arriving every 20 to 40 minutes. Since 2012, a local campaign was started pledging to extend the Route 86 tram to South Rain train station. It will continue further along Plenty Road, make a left turn at Charles Road and terminate outside South Morang Station. The proposal was also included in the Greens document. In 2016, the City of Willsey released a document about a similar proposal. Labelling it as a high priority, they have stated somewhere that traffic jams are detrimental to the well-being of humans. They stated it would improve accessibility to employment and major services. The tram extension would be beneficial to reduce congestion on Plenty Road and take cars out of car parks. The most obvious challenge is trees in the median strip. The tram tracks could be built beside the trees a bit apart from each other in the median strip. However, there might not be enough room in the median strip in some sections, so the road will need to be reconfigured with, figured with traffic lanes in different places and lanes narrowed. Or you could remove the lane from the road instead. There could be accessible island tram stop platforms built in the middle of the tram tracks as there is enough room in the gap between the tram tracks. This construction would be cost efficient and will make traffic safer on Plenty Road. 
Wide lanes can lead to more speedy and accidents on busy roads, where narrow lanes can make drivers drive slower and reduce the risk of accidents. Also, Plenty Road is the most dangerous road in the state of Victoria, according to AAMI's Crash Index reports. Being a major transit artery, it is notorious for crashes due to cars going fast, with 22% of crashes happening on Thursday afternoons. There are several lanes going in either direction, quite a lot of slip turns, and a lot of traffic lights, not to mention that trucks often use the road. So building a tram extension may reduce congestion on the road, improve safety, and save the lives of hundreds of people living in the northern suburbs. Another challenge is Westfield Shopping Centre. There is a median strip on Childs Road, which is where the tram tracks will be built. However, the massive parking lot and crossing the road would make people uneasy when walking to the shopping centre, as there could be road rage in the car parks. I've thought of pulling the tram tracks right next to the shopping centre, going through the car park. This may involve reconfiguration, but getting off the tram and walking directly to the shopping centre would be safer. Another proposal went further than South Moraine. The Willersley Council made the satellite map of a proposed tramway going along Ferries Boulevard and continuing on the Lakes Boulevard. Along the Lakes Boulevard, there are huge patches of mowed grass next to it, so building a tramway here would be pretty easy without any environmental constraints. The Plenty Valley Strategic Plan had a tram extension going as far as Hawkstow and Doreen, but this map cannot be accessed anymore, but I remember looking at it and made approximations of the route alignment. On the map, the light rail keeps going along Plenty Road, makes a left turn onto Basilica Avenue, makes a right turn onto Brettle Bay Avenue. It then makes a right turn onto Bridgen Road, passes Merger Station, and makes a left turn onto Painted Hills Road and terminates at Hazel Glen Drive. This extension might help people get to Murder and Hawkstow stations much easier and can also serve the proposed Murder Town Centre, Hazel Glen College, Ivanhoe Grammar School, Plenty Campus, some aquatic centre and a community centre. The obvious challenge include building through suburban streets. The median strip in Basilica Vista has bushes and huge trees, so the street might have to have bushes chopped down and street reconfiguration if we were building a dedicated right of way for the tram. Painted Hills Road is wide enough for tram tracks, but one section is narrow. There is a patch of grass next to the road, so the tram tracks could be built on that, and a tram stop can be built out here somewhere. These are just a couple of challenges, but I don't have any idea if the tram extension to South Brain will be built. And the murder line train was built in 2018, so I'm not sure if Doreen will get a tram. The Melbourne and Maribyrnong and councils have proposed a new tramway between Melbourne and Footscray. Footscray. It would continue along Footscray Road from Harbour Esplanade, go over the Maribyrnong River and terminate at Hyde Street. A similar proposal was also on the 1923 map. Instead, it goes from Queensbury Street, then along Arden Street, along Lloyd Street, onto the train tracks and along Dinan Road. A similar proposal was also from the Greens, only their extension makes a right turn along Whitehall Street and turns left onto Hopkins Street. It could link up with the Route 82 tram, making it a longer route and providing interchanges with the Route 75 tram. It would provide links between Footscray and Docklands town centres. Perhaps the obvious challenge is the road itself, which is made up of six lanes and has a median strip in between. Maybe reconfiguring the road and building the tram tracks in the middle would be beneficial. However, some bridge for roads are being built into place. This is part of the Westgate Tunnel Project, which I'll talk about at the end of the video, don't worry. With the tram extension at Arden Street, it was proposed when the City Link was not around. The only challenge is that the train bridges are quite low and cannot accommodate for modern trams of such height. The railway crossing at Arden Street would also involve building a tram train crossing which would cause delays for the tram. A light rail bridge also cannot be built over the train tracks because the freeway is in the way. Back to the tram extension, if the Westgate Tunnel does somehow get finished, I hope the tramway can still be possible to build. The Greens and the Rail Futures Institute had opted for a tram route from North Richmond to North Melbourne. It was also on the 1923 map. It would just involve going along Victoria Street. Not much tracks will need to be built there as there are some tram tracks already in place, including some disused tracks that diverge from Swanston Street. A new tram route would go to North Melbourne via Hawk Street, Spencer Street and Dryberg Street. It might give the Route 30 tram from St. Vincent's Hospital its own dedicated tramway, not having to share it with the City Circle tram. Overall, I don't think there are much challenges here.
The Greens opted in the same document for a tram extension from North Coburg to Gowrie. The Rail Futures Institute also opted for a similar extension to Burlington Station. The extension would continue along Sydney Road, go past Faulkner Station and terminate outside Gowrie Station. It would improve transit flexibility as if one mode of transit is disrupted, there is another alternative. An obvious challenge include the huge trees in the median strip, so building track tracks beside the trees and reconfiguring the road lanes would be ideal. This tram extension is quite small. Both the Greens and Pertua had opted for a simple tram extension to be built along Park Street, which is quite simple. It could provide a link between South Melbourne and South Yarra. When Chatston Shopping Centre was built in 1960, it was designed with car parks in mind and had about 9,000 parking spaces and ridership by car continued to grow. An independent planning panel, which cannot be accessed anymore, found that the car-centric design of the shopping centre had attributed traffic jams around the area. Ptua found the bus routes that go to the shopping centre are slow and infrequent and get stuck in traffic jams. They travel around 10 kilometres an hour, and some buses arrive every 15 to 30 minutes. There's no way that could be right! The Patua had opted for the Route 3 train to be extended from East Malvern to Chadston. It would run to East Malvern train station, then go along Waverley Road, make a right turn at Chadston Road, and terminate outside a car park. The Greens had opted for a similar extension, however it doesn't go to East Malvern station, it goes under the Monash Freeway, makes a right turn at Warrigal Road, and terminates at Middle Road. The 1923 map also had a similar extension, passing Oakley Station and at a time where Chadston was not around. The tram extension would provide easy connections to Chadston Shopping Centre and would actually attract more people to go to the shopping centre. The areas with potential tram terminuses are also poorly designed for humans. This is where the cars go and this is where the humans go. The terminus at Chadston Road could be built on one side of the road and a pedestrian crossing could be built here. This would involve reconfiguration of the road, which would reduce people travelling in cars in the long term. The terminus at Middle Road would also need to be reconfigured for a potential island platform. Further proposals have also been made to build a tram and train to the shopping centre. It would improve accessibility and would probably help people enjoy shopping at Chadston. If more people come to the shopping centre by public transport, not much cars will be used inside the car parks, and some car parks can be demolished to build garden parks and dense housing. By the time writing this, Chaston had announced that in 2022 they are upgrading the shopping centre, which includes a revitalised food court, a market pavilion, a commercial office tower called One Middle Road, and expanding the parking lot in Car Park C. They plan to be sustainable by using 750 kilovolt solar panels and the market pavilion to include a natural breeze to reduce their energy consumption by 500,000 kilovolts a year. However, I'm not convinced that this upgrade is going to reduce car transport. As I'm finished writing this, questions went into my head. Will the tram extension be built? Will the shopping centre be more accessible in the future? And if no transport is built, will the roads and traffic continue to have more problems? To me, the future seems uncertain. In 2018, the Rail Futures Institute proposed an extension of the Airport West Tram to Melbourne Airport. This tram extension is not intended for travellers, but more for locals that commute to the airport to work. In the proposal, it will continue on Melrose Drive, turn right at Micklin Road, passing Gladstone Park Shopping Centre, and go along some mysterious line to Melbourne Airport. I'm not so sure why this map is showing this, but let's assume that the tram makes a left turn onto Western Avenue, goes into an underpass, then comes out in the median strip of the Tull Marine Freeway that continues to the airport. The question is, where will the tram stop go? Well, the document doesn't specify any tram stop, so I'm going to come up with my own route. I would build a terminus beside the intersection at Centre Road and Melbourne Drive right here. Would need to build a dedicated path to the airport entrance though. By the time I'm writing this, in 2022, the Victorian government released the concept of an elevated train station at Melbourne Airport, which is to be built adjacent to the car park. I think that commuting to work at the airport is a topic to talk about in future and I would like to see what happens with this tram extension in the future. The Rail Futures Institute proposed an extension in a map from East Brighton to Moorabbin. 
This would involve extending the Route 64 tram going along the median strip of the Nepean Highway and terminating outside Moorabbin Station. This would improve connections with the Frankston Line with the tram. It would serve Dandy Park and its recreational facilities, two schools and local businesses. An obvious challenge is the trees in the middle of the median strip. Perhaps removing a car lane in the middle and building tram tracks in its place would help. There has not been much investigation for this tram extension, but I'm not sure if it will be built. In 2004, a tramway was proposed to go along Beaconsfield Parade, extending from Port Melbourne to St Kilda. It was also promoted by the City of Port Phillip in 2005. A study conducted in 2007, which cannot be accessed, found that the high density population of South Melbourne could take 200,000 tram trips and a shuttle tram would financially make sense if commuters were charged $6. Putting that aside, if the existing Route 109 tram was extended, it would do a left turn at Beacon Cove and continue along Beach Road before coming to Cummings Reserve and terminating at Katani Gardens. It would give passengers a stunning view of the beach and would provide a connection with the Route 1 tram. The challenges of building this tram extension include the trees and the sand. If the tramway was built beside the road, there are palm trees in the way and a footpath. If it was built beside the footpath, it would have to be built on the sand, which is quite an unstable foundation. So the tram track might need to go on the road. And again, this will involve modifications of the road like usual. In Katani Gardens, there is somewhat enough space to build the terminus, especially beside the trees. I'm interested to see if there is a tram that goes along the coast. Overall, the tram tracks will need to be built in some reserves. In the 1940s, the city of Camberwell proposed for an extension of the North Bolwyn tram to go to Doncaster shortly after the tram was extended there. This would involve the tram continuing along Doncaster Road, passing Greythorn Village, going over the Eastern Freeway and terminating at Westfield Shopping Centre. It was proposed as a cheaper alternative to the proposed but never built Doncaster Railway Line, a train line which has been proposed since the 19th century. The council wrote a letter to the tramways board in 1945, but nothing was done. 50 years later, in the 2000s, three town councils and the Petua have proposed for the same extension. The proposals have two different terminals. One would have a track turn left onto Bell Street and terminate outside Westfield, or another would continue along Doncaster Road and terminate near the Manningham Civic Centre. The Greens has also opted for the tram extension, with the terminus near the Manningham Civic Centre. This tram extension would be beneficial to the people of, in Doncaster as there is barely a train and a tram serving the area. Most people would often need to take buses to go to the nearest train station, which take about 25 to 40 minutes. Perhaps some challenges include building a tramway in the middle of the road, which has something else. There is a bus line that serves the 207 bus, the 282 bus and the 907 bus. You could probably still keep the bus line on the road and keep running bus services. Timetable modifications could work, like keeping each service 3-6 to six minutes apart. This could give each transport mode more priority and right of way and allow for more flexibility. What I mean by that is it can give passengers more time to think about changing from a bus to a tram. That bus service can also be upgraded as part of the project. It is a bit simple, there can be screens on tram platforms and bus shelters showing how long a bus or tram takes to arrive and what transport is about to come first. These are just some of my suggestions and I don't know if it is going to work and I'm not familiar with Doncaster. So, where's the tram extension been? In 2006, a Liberal Party opposition MP promised to commit to building a tram line in 2010 if they won the election, with a constitution cost of 35 million Australian dollars. They said there would be two accessible tram stops in every kilometre, although as of 2023 it's likely to be more as Melbourne's tram work has been subject to controversy for not being fully accessible to wheelchair people. The Labor Party ended up winning and the Liberals won in 2010, however no such tram track has been built since. Perhaps the reason for this was that the trams wouldn't go up and down the steep road, according to a not published study from the City of Manningham. However, this became controversial as it was found that there were already some tram routes that go over steep hills and mountain and suburbs, such as in Burwood Highway in Burwood, Burke Road in Camberwell and High Street in West Garth. Apparently, in 2014, the State Labor Party said that they would not commit to the tram extension because of cost concerns and engineering studies. In 2022, another Liberal Party MP committed to the extension and said that it would cost 102 million Australian dollars. However, they did not say when it would be built. So it seems clear that this tram extension has been debated for over 80 years and still has not been built. As of 2023, the future seems uncertain.
In the same document, the Ptua opted to extend the Route 72 tramline from Campwell to Doncaster Road. The tramway will continue along Burke Road until it reaches the tram tracks of the Route 42 line. The tram extension would serve a town centre on the road and the nearby Stradbuck Park. In 2006, they released another document called The Real Transport Challenges, A Call for Vision, and stated the same tram extensions on the other document. This time, they said for the Route 72 to be extended to Ivanhoe Station, but were not clear on what street. It would continue further along Burke Road, go over the Arrow River, and go through a tight street called Valtarevas Road and terminate outside of Ivanhoe Station. It was also in the 1923 map, instead it went further than Ivanhoe, splitting and going along Darabin Road and along to Heidelberg. It will provide passengers a direct connection to Ivanhoe Station and it can also provide time saving and direct trips. For example, if I were to go to Ivanhoe to Gardiner, I would need to take a train to Flinders Street then get on a Glen Waverley Line train to Gardiner, whereas a tram, I could just go straight there without changing the tram. Perhaps one challenge is building accessible stops. Some of the streets are quite tight and some cars have to park on the side. Building a race platform for the tram would work. If people park here, you could just put a clear white notice during peak hours so that cars do not park on the ramp and gives pedestrians more priority. The terminus also stops on an intersection and to get to the tram station or town, you would need to cross two roads whilst also having to cross a train track. Perhaps building a pedestrian crossing over here would help and building raised speed hubs would help. This can stop the cars from going too fast, which may help people cross the road much easier and safer around the terminus. These are just a couple of my suggestions that could work if this tram extension does go forward, and I'm interested to hear anyone's feedback on the extension. In 2013, the state government and the local council have proposed two extensions of the Route 48 and Route 11 tram. It would cross the Yarra River on its own dedicated bridge and split into two. One line goes along Henty Street and over the Westgate Freeway, along Fennel Street and Plummer Street until turning left and terminating at The Bend. The other line goes along Turner Street and goes through the industrial area to the Wharf Road and terminate at Westgate Park. Quick side note, there was once a rail line that went to Fisherman's Bend called the Web Dock Railway Line. It opened in 1986 and closed in 1996, however there are proposals to revive the line by the state government. It has been proposed as a solution for residents of Fisherman's Bend to travel to the city without need to take a car or bus. Fisherman's Bend is already undertaking a future urban renewal scheme. 80,000 people are predicted to live there and the renewal scheme includes construction of new parks, schools, transport and community centres, so a tram to Fisherman's Bend would make sense in the long term. Some challenges are the Yarra River and the freeway in the way. A tunnel or bridge would need to be built for trams to go over the freeway and there has been some scrutiny about the bridge at Yarra River. Sailors expressed concerns that the bridge would be low and tall ships wouldn't pass underneath. Some have even thought of alternatives such as the spur off the Port Melbourne light rail, putting the tram track on the Wurundjeri Way Bridge or a light rail tunnel under the river. The Victorian government estimated the bridge over the Yarra River will cost around 200 million Australian dollars. In 2017, they released a document about an integrated transport plan with a new underground metro line, the tram extension and potential crossing options over the Yarra River. Five of them go over the Yarra River in different ways, including on the Wurundjeri Way Bridge. There are two options on raising the existing Wurundjeri Way Bridge three metres higher or build the Hartley Collins Street Bridge and made a number chart showing benefit ratings. They found the Hartley Collins Street Bridge scored the most points and that may be a viable option. They also insisted for a drawbridge but said it would slow down performance of the tram network. They labelled it as medium term meaning that light rail connections are important for population growth, but says northern alignment of light rail is more of a priority. Infrastructure Australia also labelled the project as a medium priority. In 2019, the Victorian government invested 4.5 million Australian dollars every year to investigate the proposal and develop a business case. As of 2022, they invested around 15 million Australian dollars in the planning phase. In 2022, the Victorian Labor Party committed to studying transport options in Fisherman's Bend, they said that local residents were protesting against the tram bridge being built across the Arrow River and the Labor candidate insisted on implementing experimental trackless trams in the areas. If you don't know what a trackless tram is, it is a swankier electric bus with the latest road vehicle technology. The Council of Port Phillip has since pushed for the tram extension to go forward. As of 2023, there's not been any further announcements from the Victorian government about the proposals, so the future of this tram extension seems uncertain.
In the same Petua document, they have opted for the Route 16 tram that terminates at Kew to be extended along Cotham Road and terminate at Kew Junction. It would provide connections with buses along High Street and Studley Park Road and would facilitate non-radial journeys. There would not be that much infrastructure projects as the tram tracks are already in place. However, there is one challenge. The Route 16 tram is terminating in the middle of Kew Junction, which means that it would not move for 5 minutes, creating a bottleneck for the through-passing Route 48 and 109 trams. Perhaps building one tram track that turns right onto Studley Park Road and then building a siding for the tram would allow for temporary stabling of the tram and other trams can pass through the junction. This is quite a simple extension and I would like to hear anybody's thoughts on the extension. In the same Petua document, they have opted for the Route 75 tram to be extended. Even the Greens opted for the extension. It would involve the tram line continuing along Burwood Highway from Vermont South, pass under the East Link Freeway, passing Knox City Shopping Centre and terminating near the Knox City Council Precinct. It would provide direct services to Knox City Shopping Centre and help people get to Deakin University. Some challenges include trees in the way, so maybe building tram tracks besides the trees would help, similar to the Route 86 extension, modifications will need to be made to the road. A local transit group called the Eastern Transport Coalition has also opted for this extension. In 2022, the Knox City Council worked a $2 million investigation study by the state Liberal opposition. A series of MPs and officials said that an extension had been ignored for too long. They also said the state Labor Party extended the tram line to Vermont South, but the state Liberal Party has not built any extensions despite their promises. The state Liberals have also studied other extensions further than Knox City, which involves a tram line extended to Upper Ferntree Gully Station and another line that spurs out left onto Mountain Highway, passing Wanturner Bayswater Station and ending at Dorset Road. This provides a good connection with Wanturner Health Precincts and the Belgrave Line. However, their feasibility study considered the use of trackless trams. Trackless trams are an articulated vehicle that runs on the road and doesn't use any physical track, basically a fancy electric bus. In early 2020s, Melbourne had rolled out their own electric buses with the intention of making their bus network zero emissions. A couple of YouTubers including RM Transit and Adam Something have called electric buses a band-aid solution as a way to avoid systemic problems of urban sprawl. This includes houses being far apart, local amenities being far away, building only roads as transport and making people use cars to go places. Now we talked a lot about tram extensions and many of them are simple. Apart from extensions requiring studies, delays in the process, obstructions in the way, there is one extension which is already up for debate. In 2018, the Victorian government announced a tram extension from Caulfield to Roeville and had the State Labor Party fund $3 million Australian dollars for the planning phase in a 2018-2019 state budget. In their map, the tram line would continue along Dandenong Road, passing Chatterton Shopping Centre, making a right turn onto Wellington Road, passing Monash University, Mulgrave, until eventually terminating at Stud Road in Roeville. This is an alternative proposal to the Roeville railway line. In 1969, the government released a transport plan outlining train extensions. This included a railway extension out to Roeville, which has yet to be built. So building a tram is about as reasonable as a railway. On Dandenong Road, the 601 bus route that runs from Huntingdale Station to Monash has become the busiest in Melbourne and ridership has continued to double up. The tram would help people from Roeville get to the city much easier and can improve accessibility to Monash University. There aren't really much challenges, most of it's on a median strip, so there's plenty of space to build it on. There are sections with lots of trees with some beside the road, so in some cases, trees would need to be taken away. In 2019, the federal government had given $475 million for a similar railway line to Roeville, but it starts at Oakley Station and is called Monash Rail. At the same time, local councils in the area expressed concerns over the state government giving up the tram extension. Eventually, in 2021, Monash University proposed and lobbied for a trackless tram to be built and made an alternative route. This time, making a left turn onto Ferntree Gully Road, passing Notting Hill, going along Blackburn Road and continuing along Wellington Road. The Federal Labor Government gave six million Australian dollars for the planning phase of the project and is working with the Minister for Transport and Infrastructure to write up a business case. I am concerned that this project is going to go wrong at some point, but I am not sure what is happening as of 2023. By the time writing this, the federal government withdrew the funding for the Monash Rail in their October 2022-2023 federal budget.
So that's the rest of the tram extensions in Melbourne that I wanted to cover in this video. And there are many others I didn't cover in the 1923 map. And there were barely any tram extensions to the western suburbs. Sorry about that. So what's the catch? Well, in the Greens document, building a one kilometer double track cost 15 million Australian dollars in 2014, adjusted to 19 billion Australian dollars in 2023. They said the tram extensions are in total in length of about 56 kilometers, costing 840 million Australian dollars, adjusted to 1.78 billion Australian dollars in 2023. I did mention the Westgate Tunnel project in the video, so here's my take. For me personally, I think this is a step backwards to solve the climate crisis and attempt to pull off something called induced demand. It's just a process in which more freeways are built to reduce traffic jams, but freeways still fill up with cars regardless. The Westgate Tunnel has been criticised for contaminating rock and soil and costing over 5 billion Australian dollars, but being inflated to 10 billion dollars. Imagine what could have been done to Melbourne's tram system for that amount of money. I did some math and found the tram extensions in this video are approximately 127.75 kilometers in length altogether. This is not completely accurate. I used the navigator on Google Maps and found kilometers within driving directions. The cost to build a 127.75 kilometer system would cost approximately 2 billion Australian dollars altogether. This is my own approximation based on the math I did with adding up the length of each tram extension and multiplying it with the 10 figure cost. This goes to show that tram extension projects are quite affordable compared to how much is spent on freeways and road infrastructure. Even when you count the $10 billion blowout on the Westgate tunnel that only goes four kilometers. There might be a cost inflation because of other things such as bridges, tram stops, growing trees even. Anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed. If you did, leave a like and I would like to hear your feedback on my take on tram extensions because I might have missed a couple of things when I did my research. And if you'd like to see me talk more about tram extensions and if there are a couple of tram extensions that you talked about on the internet a lot, feel free to talk about it to me. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.